if this is the first time you're going through the criminal justice system, it feels like you're moving into a foreign world. It certainly did for me, and I have no doubt everyone on our team. So if you're going moving into this foreign world and you're watching this video on YouTube, I wanna give you guidance. Our team wants to help you better prepare for this journey. And those preparations include a reminding all of you that just because you read something online doesn't mean that it's true. It doesn't mean that it's gonna translate into what's gonna happen in your life. And I share this earlier, I received a phone call from a doctor in Florida who was sentenced to 37 months in federal prison for healthcare fraud. And he's devastated, frankly scared, that he's gonna be going to Miami federal prison camp instead of Pensacola, which is what his lawyer asked for. And I learned a lot on that call, including why he was so scared, why he's so scared to go to Miami. First, he spoke with a former client of his lawyers. And again, this former prisoner may have been offering him good advice from his own life, but that doesn't mean it's gonna to translate to him. And this former prisoner essentially said, Miami's awful, it's terrible, it's the worst prison in America. Of course, that totally contradicts with a colleague on our team, Sam Mangel, who got sentenced to 60 months in Miami through his hard work and planning, got out in 22 months. Again, two totally different experiences based on their adjustment. So he got prison advice from a former prisoner, also got some prison advice from his lawyer, which I think is a mistake. I don't think a lawyer should bail their client to give federal prison advice. Further, the advice is, is often wrong because they haven't experienced time in custody. They haven't been to federal prison. It's the same reason I don't negotiate or give advice on plea agreements. I don't have a law degree. So I had to remind this doctor of that. Additionally, he read this article that was produced many years ago on CNBC, written by someone who I don't know, but I do know that he has no experience in the criminal justice system. In this article on CNBC that still lives and has a very good ranking in Google, just Google it, read the article. References like the top 10 cushiest federal prison camp, Montgomery and Pensacola is on there. And part of the reason it was great in one instance is because you can have a job that allows you to serve cookies and cake or coffee to the warden and the warden's wife. I don't know how you would quantify a good job in prison, but I wouldn't quantify it by working alongside the warden. I would quantify it by finding a job that's 30 minutes a day and you spend the rest of your time preparing. So getting back to this executive who called, he's devastated and scared to go to Miami based on what he heard from, from somebody else. So what I reminded him and I remind all of you, where you go to prison at the end of the day isn't as significant as you think. There are people out there who may charge five or $10,000 guaranteeing you you're going to get a prison of your choosing. Our team is not one of them. I got a call from one of these executives who told me, I think you give away too much information in your videos. Some truth should be, some truth should be left unsaid or something akin to that essentially saying, yeah, they may get the prison of their choosing anyway, but I sell the hope that they're gonna get this prison versus the other and it's better for them. When the end, it doesn't really matter. You ask for the right prison at your sentencing, you're likely to get it. And if you don't, that's okay. I think it's fine because you shouldn't be scared about the prison as much as you may want the best prison. Certainly there are pros and cons to each. What you should be scared about is what does your life look like on the other side? So at the end of this call with this physician, rather than being scared about going to Miami, or hearing that the commissary isn't as good, or that I'm gonna walk away because there's some gardening going on, or hearing that the jobs aren't as good, things that in the totality of his life or your life will have no significance. And I empathize and sympathize with it because I used to worry and obsess about the same things. The food, the toilets, the showers, the job, the visiting, the commissary. In the end, in the totality of our life, means zero. What you have to do is what this doctor surrendering to prison soon is now doing, which is, thinking and assessing, wow, I'm used to making a half a million bucks a year as a physician. I've lost my medical license. My wife admittedly has never worked. I have children, two of them in college. A younger son will someday go to college. Hmm, I'm gonna be on probation soon. I'm gonna be in the halfway house soon. What can I do now to get the job of my choosing? Further, what skills do I need to build or grow or networks do I need to create so I can have a job that is somewhat commensurate with my skill set? I've only been a doctor. That's what should scare him if he's not putting those plans in place. I didn't, are you? It's the only reason you're watching prison videos, not to watch me walk through the neighborhood not far from where I live, or tell you I was gonna walk by the bocce ball court and say, oh, it's the first bocce ball court I've seen since I was in prison. Still don't know how to play, that's utterly useless. You're here not to be scared about prison, to learn, to remind you that just because you read something online doesn't mean that it's true. Verify, vet, ask questions. 
that article has done so much disservice to people traversing the criminal justice system. It's caused so much heartache and hope because people that ask for the prison, they get it. And they're like, this place sucks compared to this place I've heard, but I read it. It must be true. I read it online. It really doesn't matter. I want you to be scared if you're not preparing properly. I want you to be scared if you're not thinking how you're going to get the job you want from a probation officer. I want you to be scared that they're gonna force you to get that $15 an hour job. And yes, I believe all work is noble, of course. I had a $15 an hour job in the halfway house for a little while, but let's be authentic, let's be honest, let's own it. You don't want that job. Not if your skill set is significantly higher and you're used to making money. That's what I want you to be scared about. And those are the questions I want you to be asking leading up to sentencing. So if you can do that, and mitigate leading up to sentencing, I think you'll be more successful because you'll get a shorter prison term. And while I say prison can be fairly easy and benign, I'm not dumb. Of course, you want the shortest sentence possible. And if you can begin to think about success on the other side right now, and while in custody, like Sam Mangel did, a colleague on our team, I mentioned 60 months out in 22, working with our team while he's been in custody for the last year, unlike many of the people with whom he's serving time in the halfway house, that didn't happen by accident. It was planning. It was strategic. It was thinking and worrying not about what prison he goes to or the food or the toilets or the commissary, but rather, what do I do on the other side to support my family? That's what I want you to do. Don't worry about the prison. Be discerning with the advice that you're getting, including from your lawyer if it's not related to federal prison advice. It's part of the reason our team, we work with a lot of great lawyers. Sometimes we're critical, but some of the lawyers who refer our team business, and admittedly, we also refer them business, Diane Bass, Eric Kreitzman, David Rosenfield, Alan Eisner, Mark Worksman, I can go on and on. They'll refer clients to us and say, Justin, I don't have experience with the BOP. I need you to help. Uh, we don't have experience with the first person narrative. Can you help? They understand their skill set. They think in terms of we and a team rather than, rather than I. And that's what I want you to think about building your team. Think about developing your skill sets. Think about your network and who you can bring into it. Think about demonstrating why you're worthy of the job that you're gonna to wanna to have in the, ha in the halfway house. Because if you don't do that, that's when you should be scared. Not whether you go to Pensacola, Miami, Cumberland. I can go on and on, what are they, 90 plus federal prison camps. Thank you so much for watching this video. The only thing you should be scared about, like I was, what do you do when you come home? How do you support a family? How would you overcome this wretched system and ensure that it does not amount to a life sentence? If you can think in those terms, uh, you're gonna be on your path, but don't run from it. Don't pretend it's not happening. Don't live in denial and say, I'm gonna, get a, I'm gonna get around to it. I'm gonna deal with it next week or next month. And you're creating habits that allow you to evade or ignore it. You've gotta own it. It's the reason that you're here. Our team wants to help. And I'm just so grateful you're allowing our team to continue to come into your home. I'm gonna go get this run in. Do you ever uh, have days where you're gonna exercise and you've had the running clothes on for like four hours and you're delaying and delaying and delaying? Now I'm delaying, but I'm gonna go get it over with right now. Thank you all so much for watching. Goodbye.